Okay. So on from enterprise operations. And and guys, how good is it that we're actually talking about zero downtime upgrades and stuff like that? I think we must be maturing as a project. This is great. Um, so, okay, uh, mini loop, Mojo loop for everyone. So this is pillar one, and, um, and we're just going to go over goals, updates as PI, what's actually happened since last PI. Um, did we do anything? Uh, did I do anything? Um, mini loop enabled Mojo loop activity. There was that was actually pretty some pretty cool things there. Uh, uh, demos, um, uh, news and thanks and possible next steps. Okay, so goals. I really think this is so important. Democratize access to Mojo loop. That's why Lewis asked me to get get um uh get stuck into this in the first place and invited invited me to uh to participate uh cost effective it really is about tco anybody who's got a business they know it's about cost 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 how long is your runway depends on what your burn rate is even for even for donated money still depends on what what your burn rate is what your cost and your outgoings are so i i talk to I, I, I thought, because I wasn't hearing a lot of people coming back to me and saying cost was important. In fact, I sort of got some lectures that it wasn't. Then I talked to the customers. You've got to believe um, that every one of them is, is egging me on saying, please, yes, you, you're singing the right tune. Um, anyway, we want to ensure, ensure that mini loop development uh, deployment is sufficiently complete so you can use it for testing for a lot of things. Um, it needs to be a cheap dev test option. Oh, sorry, it, it can provide a cheap dev test option for Mojo Loop itself. Um, and we want to make sure that Mojo Loop deployment is scriptable, repeatable, and rapidly spun up or down. This is important for a whole heap of reasons. And most importantly, this, this is the one that's actually really, that's really just brought me a lot of joy and satisfaction is that it's helping to ensure the students and other interested parties, not just not just the country level people who are going to we're hoping will will spend or use millions of dollars, but actually there's a whole lot of people that are actually getting benefit from Mojo as we actually go, and whether they're starting and using it with DFS hackathons to to demo tourism businesses, or whether they're just actually learning about Kubernetes and with a real world application, I've got to tell you. That's actually pretty cool. Um, and I, I hope there are other people that are just as excited about that as me. Anyway, updates. Mini Loop 5.0 has been released. Uh, it deploys Mojo Loop v15 plus, v15.1 actually now. Um, uh, I've simplified it a bit further. Uh, Mini Loop scripts, mini loop dash simple dot in shell dot dash install dot shell. It basically installs Kubernetes and then installs uh, Mojo Loop for you with, with everything else. I didn't do that initially because I thought it was good for people to see the two steps, deploying the Kubernetes infrastructure and then deploying Mojo Loop. Um, you can still do that, but there's also this option. Uh, it updates to use Kubernetes 1.26 and 1.27, the re the recent and uh, live versions of Kubernetes, uh, it vastly simplified the deployment code. I took I spent more time taking code out of Mini Loop uh, as I've gone from Mini Loop version four point one to five point and that's because Core is now tracking to the KH releases. Um, we put in, uh, and I say we, you know, basically I think Sam, Miguel. Um, uh, VJ and myself, we put in the updates for the ingresses and for separating out the back ends. So I really do need to do very few local mods now from the what's in the Helm repos to what's actually going into the charts in the local deploy. Added a, a minus o, o option. So per, per what Paul asked me, it now deploys uh, three PPI and bulk charts. Uh, also implemented a my, minus O domain name. That needs a bit more documentation and testing, but that was for the World Bank GDP demo. So you can run a domain name. You don't need local hosts. 
uh, entries, updated the documentation, you know, now how to, to run the TTK from Windows laptops, added some cheesy videos. They're really, they're really terrible, but apparently they're useful. Um, added some stats so you can see how much your memory is utilization before and after deploy, how long the deploy ta takes, et cetera. It's just all starting to become a little bit more sophisticated, really. Um, and added uh, uh, some test scripts so you can run mini loop in a, a test. You can actually run uptime tests. So far, I've got to 23 hours. The hub will stay up for 23 hours with what I've been testing. Uh, that's on version 15. So um, I haven't really examined that. That's just uh, I created the script. I ran it. I got to 23 hours before things started falling over. Um, still on updates, I've added the vNext alpha branch. So if you uh, clone the uh, minus minus branch uh, uh, space vnext dash alpha, you'll get the vnext vnext alpha branch, and it deploys Mojo Loop vnext alpha in about five to ten minutes. It's still x eighty six vnext alpha almost works on ARM sixty four, and I'm desperate to do that. Uh, I wanted to demo that to you tonight for Mojo Loop on Raspberry Pis. And that's really important for doing on-prem testing to me because I can afford about seven or eight Raspberry Pis. Um, uh, it will also then deploy to the Oracle Cloud Always Free tier, which will give us eight gigabyte, four CPU instances, and an always free uh, MongoDB front end to the uh, autonomous database. So basically a free place to test and deploy uh, Mojo Loop. And um, and most important, my Mac M1, M2 laptops. Uh, there's enough people got those now. Running uh, Mojo Loop on those would be an advantage. Uh, I said Kubernetes. It runs on Kubernetes 1.26, 1.27. Very very familiar. Very simple deployment. Um, you know, Vnext Alpha and Shell and Spool dot Shell um, minus O logging option. Deploys the Elastic Search, Kibana, Ingress, Auditing, and Logging. Uh, essentially, I stopped putting BOF or uh, Finance Portal into the current version in Miniloop because it's all native and going to be very accessible in VNext. In fact, much of it is already there. So, so you get, we sort of get um, that functionality native in VNext. There wasn't much point in going back and trying to to understand it for for um, uh, for V15 or, or co. And thanks very much to Paul um, as well for uh, for helping me understand the current boff. That was uh, really important. Um, and we're doing deployment in a very very simple way. There's about three thousand lines of of, uh, of of deployment code. Uh, and that, and there's a currently you can either do a Docker compose or, or use Kubernetes with vNext, um, and that includes the both of those uh, numbers. It's it's really not very much at all. Um, some really interesting things. One of our community and, and hub operators said you ought to look at the uh, the the activity for um, uh, for mini for Mojo Loop enabled mini loop uh, activity. And, and it's interesting. We're sort of getting between 10 and, uh, you know, 10, 15 or so uh, unique um, uh, cloners. I think this was the hack, was that the hackathon? Uh, or maybe some VNEX team um, uh, uh, testing. Uh, but, but, but this is actually pretty typical each week. And I'm sure before Miniloop was being uh, used so much, there weren't anywhere near as many people actually getting access to Mojo Loop, and that's that's got to be that's got to be great. Also, two of the three winners of the of the um, of the DFS Labs uh, uh, activity were using Mini Loop, and one used uh, Google Kubernetes engine. Um, Phoenix deployment, a running Ubuntu twenty two instance, run the case install, run the VNext install. And it installs each of these layers, the infrastructure layer, um, the cross-cutting, the applications, and then the TTK. And so I think 
I need to get on and give you a demo. So I'm going to uh, stop my sharing and I'm going to uh, find Zoom. Uh, I'm share my screen, share all that, close that down. And uh, I figured that I wouldn't have time for uh, uh, do I do it here? Do I do it there? Give me. I'm hoping this is large enough that everybody can see. So I figured that I wouldn't have time to run this real time. But essentially, here's the uh, here's the running. Um, um, if you're showing your terminal, we can't see it. Uh, you can't. Oh, it's not shared. Share screen. I want to share desktop one. You can't see my terminal? No. We see your host. Your host. We see the whole screen. Um, yeah. Uh, like all right. See. I'll do it this way. All right. Sorry. All right. I'm going to have to do it this way. I've outsmarted myself. So you can see my terminal now, right? Thank you. Yep. You can see my terminal? Uh, yeah. Hang on, it's it's still loading. No, we're not seeing anything, Tom. Ah, uh, what about now? Yes, yes, now we can see that. That's ah. fine. Well, that didn't work out so well, did it? All right, but I bet it's small, isn't it? Is it small? Yes, oh, it's, it's good. Could you zoom in a little? Is that better? Mm, I guess best as, yeah, well, not really, but I, I think it will work. Just about right there, yeah. All right. So, so look, guys, that's, that's showing you. Uh, this is really annoying. Um, I need to, all right. What about now? That's good. All right. So look, I didn't have. I'm not going to have time to run it. So, so here's what it does. It basically clones the VNext repo. It uh, modifies it, and then it goes through. It uses Helm to deploy the infrastructure services, Mongo, Redis, um, Elasticsearch, etc. Um, and then it just uses YAML files, which we actually can maintain from Docker. Uh, Docker compose files using the Kubernetes compose uh, application. And then it does those in layers, the cross-cutting, the apps, uh, the apps layer, and then the TTK. Right. That's so that shows you there's nothing up the sleeve, right? Let me now see. Can I if I share my Firefox window? Can you? You can't see my Firefox window either. You can now, right? Yeah, we can. Yep. Okay. All right. So what I want to do very quickly is show you that VNext is now running on this VM, and uh, I log in as uh, oh, I'm logged in, so I can go to we load some participants. We've got a, a blue bank configured. We've got a green bank. And uh, interestingly enough, we've got a TTK running for blue bank. We've got a TTK running for green bank. And uh, we can put those into monitoring. There's green bank. There's uh monitoring and we can go to do something like quotes uh if we can create a quote by the way this is so cool having this ui i've probably learned more about payments and transfers and quotes by working with pedro and the team with this ui and deploying it than i've actually been learning uh in in with previous other tools 
Uh, it, this is very, 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 very cool for learning. So there is a bug here that that screen didn't update. Uh, but now if I go to the, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, that quote ID and we we'll see the quote is accepted, create transfer and I can create a transfer. And what we should be seeing in my other windows is we should be seeing activity with post and uh, and there's, I don't know, maybe some sort of error there. But anyway, this is all work in progress. I think, oh, that, no. Anyway, you get the idea. You can run the TTK from the blue bank uh, just as you would expect. You can run the DFSP tests. And that's probably all I need to say for that, really. That just gives you a flavour. Ne never mind the width, just uh, it, it just shows you that we're deploying vNext Alpha. Pedro is obviously going to show you uh, vNext Alpha properly. And then I just want to finish off with um, uh, share my screen, the PowerPoint, share. Uh, I just want to finish off with um, the slideshow. With some news and some thanks, um, Miniloop has been transferred to MojoLoop GitHub repo. So to get Miniloop now, it's github.com slash MojoLoop slash Miniloop. And I'll pause for a round of applause. Yep, good. Okay. Uh, for vNext Alpha, you want to pull the branch, you git clone minus branch vNext Alpha. Um, so the, uh, um, to that uh, Git repo. Um, some other news, we're working on packaging um, Mifos and Payment Hub and EE, and that's a Google-sponsored collaboration, and that's thanks to Ed Cable of Mifos. Now, that, this came about because we were sitting together in, um, in Kigali and it was actually a, an idea that Lewis had uh, two or three years ago. So that's actually happening now. And it also flows out of Paul Macon's ideas around the, um, uh, the World Bank demo and some of the storyboarding he did. So the outcome of this is ideally a storyboard that, in, that shows why you want Mifos and, uh, and Mojaloo. It's a marketing tool to explain the benefit of the projects and to also allow people to a demo of how to package them up together and then build on them. Um, and I and thanks. I really want to thank uh, especially to Paul, uh, Simeon, Desire, and Kim for their support and development promotion of uh, of, of Mojaloo via Miniloo. They've been big supporters. Um, and uh, I think Sam, I think you're um, uh, pushing me to, to put it into Mojo Loop. I think now is the right time. And, and you you were quite right about a number of things there, sir. And I hope uh and, and I I hope that the the donation there to uh, or the putting it into the the Mojo Loop repo is uh I hope you take that as acknowledgement of that, uh, uh Sam. Thanks a lot, Tom. I'm going to deploy today. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was hoping you'd say that. That was the top answer. Excellent, sir. Um, look, possible next steps. Some things are murky right at the moment I, um, uh, with with what next steps are regarding a, a couple of things in the on the project. But but here are the things that um, uh, that are possible that could be done. Uh, fully integrate the Vnext Alpha and Beta release into into Mini Loop. Um, I'm a couple of releases behind what uh, what Pedro's got already. We need a, a, a pipeline so that makes sure that. Um, that that just keeps getting updated. Mini Loop is always deploying the latest working. Um, we know how that goes. Proper CI/CD or GitOps uh, functionality, uh, full functionality for ARM uh, 64. It does open a lot of opportunities, um, particularly in the demo space. Um, I promised Jason that I would uh, put 
um, mini loop onto Azure Marketplace. So I'm going to do that to fulfill that that I said I'd do. Um, I need to move, uh, well, we, we, I plan at some stage to move a warning page about use for demos only to the front. And this is something that, um, uh, uh, that Paul, um, and I'm having a seniors moment, Paul Baker, thank you, uh, suggested, um, he really was educating me about some of the concerns that people might be if, if mini loop got more fully featured, people might be tempted to use it for real money. So I think we can we can get around that by put, putting the warnings that I've clearly got there just up the front and, and requiring a user acknowledgement. So so Paul, I heard you on that one. I think it's it's a valid, it's valid, and I think we can take care of that. Um, there are opportunities that are going to come from the Google Summary of Code, MeFOS integration. Um, there's Simplification error checking, the DNS is a good example. And uh, I'm going to produce a couple of hopefully less cheesy install videos. That, folks, is it for the mini loop update. Thanks, Tom. Um, there's, a, there's a question from Karim uh, Jindani. What are the specs required to run mini loop? Also, does it contain the support for third party initiated payments? Uh, for V15, for for module uh, for Mini Loop version five from the Module Loop repo, it most certainly includes support for third party three PPI. Uh, again, thanks to Paul Malcolm, uh, uh, Paul Malcolm for that um, for that suggestion, and uh, um, and uh, it's taking best part of sixteen gigs for for. Uh, Mojulu v15.1. And that's something that Miguel and I have talked about looking at. I I think it would be better to bring that back to the eight gigs that we used to have, but I don't know what the scope is there. Okay. Um, Tom, there are a couple of comments in the chat in there. Um, one from Sam. Um, are you able to confirm ARM readiness? Uh, for vNext Alpha, I think the only thing that stands between x86 and, uh, uh, sorry, ARM deployment and uh, is the MongoDB Helm chart. Bitnami haven't uh, updated their Helm charts. So that, depending on what uh, what the future holds, the immediate future holds. Uh, that's that's one of my short term goals is to get it working on ARM. If nothing else, I just want it working on my Mac for crying out loud. But so so it's close. And to be really clear, be really clear, all of the V next code and uh, uh, Pedro has building in uh, in a pipeline that runs uh, across ARM and x86 AMD etc. That's all there. Um, Tom, you have about 10 minutes if you want to go to the multi-cloud native deployment tool. Uh, you mean I've got 10 minutes to get through the whole thing? Yes. Or alternatively, we can move that to tomorrow for you. Would you prefer that? Uh, um, I, yeah, I, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, why don't we do that? Give my voice a rest. That'll be fine. All right. So we'll move that to tomorrow. Um, thanks, Tom. So that gives us nine minutes. Uh, there is a lot of chatter in the chat. Um, um, I, I can give maybe another three, four minutes if anybody wants to come on off mute and uh, speak. Uh, Pedro, um, maybe Pedro, I'll pass it to you first if you want to make a quick comment on the ARM deployments. And I'll hey. be next. Thank you, Simeon. Can you guys hear me well? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you, Tom. This was great. Uh, yes, that's um, obviously where where I've seen some crazy Raspberry Pi clusters, um, but um, but no, that's that, that's definitely not the point. This is serious. Uh, production is a serious thing. So the, the, the point that we're making is portability, and it means inclusiveness in the sense that anyone should be able to run module 
and it should be as cheap as we can get it to be. Um, not for the production one, but for the experience, for the tryout, for the lab, etc. So um, what we're doing right now with Modulo V Next is the pipeline builds already for those three um, architectures. So those three CPU architectures. So it should work for pretty much um, any computer that we throw it. So that's um, that's the good news. Thanks, Simon. Don't forget Graviton too, right? Graviton uh, it, AWS yeah. opens up a whole heap of images on AWS and uh, and Google. So so it's really it's it's a really it's a got to have these days. Yeah, yeah, that, that's actually the, the the important part. So that the, the the joke about not running it on in production in Raspberry Pi, obviously, please don't do that. But um, the reality is, as Tom is saying, there's Graviton. There's a lot of other new machines that are popping up in in um, in cloud computing that are using ARM processors, and those sometimes tend to be a, a lot cheaper than than other offerings. So again. Targeting lower TCO and reducing the cost of um, of module loop and and um, reducing the barrier to entry. Awesome, thanks, Pedro. Uh, Miller, if do you do you want to make a comment here as we close the session? Hello. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you. Sorry about that. Hey, uh, this is the really excellent progress. Thank you so much. I think that really the key piece here is to show that we have a pretty broad scale of what we're targeting, which is both daunting to get it right, but also allows for a lot more collaboration in both the pre-production and in the production deployment strategies. I think as we've seen, ideally people would be deploying a, some kind of permission cloud in a uh, it, such as an AWS, Azure, Google compute. But I think that what we're seeing is by regulation, running on premises is essential. Uh, that is still the, the mode that supports the sovereignty requirements of the countries that are deploying Mojaloop. And so as we see the scale form between what does on premises look like, how many boxes do I have and how do I manage them? and to all of the good comments from Michael Richards and others about, and how do I maintain them over time, uh, making sure that I can maximize the uptime and be able to manage the updates without essentially having to forego an update because I can't tolerate the downtime. All of that's great, but we have to shift left again and say, but how do the developers actually work on it? And if you can really run uh, if we can get back to eight gigabytes, that's awesome. You could really run a full stack with the simulators uh, and with the three PPI and some of the other pieces running on it, then we can really unblock the development side of this. So development through CI, CD in a tolerably cost-effective environment, and then the ability to go to pre-production to try out what the upgrade paths look like until you're sure and then push the button and go into production, which might be a very large metal cluster, or it might be a, uh, a, a public cloud. I think that's the continuum. It's ideal, but there's a ton of moving parts there. And I think that this is a great though example of uh, really digging into what tools are available to automate this and building on what we've done already, what the grid work that's done on IEC and the rest. Anyway, I thank you. That's that's really. I just I'm just excited to see this all come together. It's it's a lot of work uh, by a lot of people, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Um, um, that's a lot of great work. Um, those of us who are sitting in a boardroom somewhere in London are quite. Uh, we all have smiling faces and really excited about all the progress and all the possibilities coming. Um, thank you so much, Tom. Tom, do you have any wrap up comments? Um. Yeah, just the um, uh, I just posted the stats for from the deployment that I showed you. Uh, Mini Loop um, creates stats now at the end, and without Elasticsearch and and logging, right? Um, so it uses what at the four four point five nine gigabytes after it's in, after it's installed. So about about three gigabytes for VNext install the way I just installed it. Nice. 
Tom, are you all covered? Uh, I'm, no, that's that's me done. Thank, thanks, thanks, thanks again, folks. Awesome.